Hello everybody, Joan here. This is video number five, I think. Yes, five in the Cape Cod making series. In the last video, I attached the cape to the coat part of the Cape Cod and it looked great. It has been a few weeks since that. Life has just gotten crazy and so I haven't had a chance to work on it but I figured that if I actually wanted to be able to wear this cape coat this spring, I had to get on it and get to work. So in this video, I am attaching the collar to the coat uh, and I am attaching the facings. And after this, the only thing that's going to be left to do is the hem and the linings and so that will be the next video. So for the facings, I've gotten started already. The facing comes in four pieces five pieces. One is the back neck facing here and then you have the facings for the uh, the front part of the coat. Now initially, so these are two pieces. This is the, the facing for the body and then this one goes um, below. So um, this is the center front essentially. Uh, initially, I was going to cut this in one piece because I thought that they had it in two pieces just to say fabric because it is pretty long but then I realized that they're actually cut on different grains so I cut them separate I have sewn them I have attached uh, or uh, fused the interfacing I've done basically all of the prep work for the facings before starting to actually put on the collars and my wool uh, with the interfacing wasn't laying very flat uh, on the seams so even though this seam here is technically on the inside I went ahead and let me show you here close up I top stitched it just to make sure that it actually stays flat and doesn't pocket or anything and I know this is really hard to see without a full body shot but essentially this is the part of the coat that goes like this and this is the collar that you will actually see on the outside and so now I'm going to attach collar pieces to this thing one of the collar pieces gets attached to the body of the coat uh, and the other one gets attached to the facing and then they get uh, sewn together and turned right side out now this is very different in coat making the way that you attach the collar is different to the way that you might attach a collar say for a shirt that has a collar stand where you start by sewing together the collar pieces so not the stand but the collar and then you attach that to the whole shirt uh, in coat making from what I have experienced so far because and I think it's because it's so bulky you do it differently you attach one the upper collar to the facing the lower collar or the under collar to the coat and then you uh, sew them right sides together I guess and turn them inside out and then I'm gonna show you something uh, that I, I do to the collars to make sure that they lay flat but basically seam allowances and I'm getting way ahead of myself here seam allowances get pressed flat rather than down on the collar and then uh, sewn by hand uh, seam allowance to the I guess the interfacing in this case so make sure that they stay flat so we're gonna get started with that but before I do that I have to uh, true these these seams here because they are uh, sort of curved seams they don't actually um, they, they line up not on the cut line but they line up on the seam line which means you end up with funnies like this so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'm gonna get started with the color let me show you the color pieces too before I do all of that so this is one of the collars and they are uh, they're identical there's not a difference between the upper collar and the lower collar so one of these will be attached to the facing one of these will be attached to the coat now this is the part that gets really uh, unwieldy because there's absolutely so much fabric so I'm attaching the collar to the cape coat which is a massive uh, bit here and also there is so much material here and I'm attaching a very rounded sort of edge 
to so a very concave to a very convex seam so eventually when they are put together they will be correct but it is very difficult to get them all in so I am going to struggle with this for a little and once I am done pinning it and everything matches as it should I think I'm going to baste it before I put it through the machine and also I'm a little worried about this machine uh, sewing through so many layers so I'm gonna try it first and if that, that doesn't work I'm going to have to pull out the big guns that is the Bernina but we'll see <laughs> Okay, so I have pinned it together and I think it matches as well as it is going to match just because there is a lot going on here. So I'm measuring two, well I'm measuring three things. I'm measuring that the points of the lapel match in reference to where the collar is sewn. I'm measuring that the collar ends end up in the same place so they're the same length and also I'm measuring where the end stitching for the collar which is these red lines here that I'll show you in a moment that they are you know more or less in the right place and that once everything is put together it will all look nice <laughs> um, and with so much fabric so much material so many layers here I think um, this is as good as it's going to get so now I will base everything before trying to sew it just to keep it in place. Okay, so I based it and that didn't actually work. So I'm thinking that the only way that I'm going to be able to get everything to match properly to attach this round collar to this thing here. Oh, th this round neckline to the collar is to... Um, clip into the seam allowance of the cape coat so that it stretches out a little bit and it's a little bit straighter and I will do that hoping that I don't completely and absolutely screw this thing up at this stage so here goes nothing okay so I thought I, I thought I was recording the clipping but I wasn't actually recording the clipping so I've clipped an, about half an inch into the seam allowance. The seam allowance here is five eighths of an inch. And now, as you can see, it's a lot straighter than the circle that was before. So hopefully they will make the process easier. I'm gonna pin again, base again, and see what happens. So I think that this time maybe I got it. Now, initially I thought that I would sew, um, that I would sew this seam with a coat, so this part, down on the sewing machine plate because even though I have a I have a walking foot here it's still because there's so much fabric there's so many layers the feeding is still gonna be a little uneven but instead uh, I'm going to put the collar side down on the sewing machine and I think that is going to make for an easier time for me sewing and for things to um, sort of uh, um, feed better and in order to do that because my markings are on the collar I'm going to have to be very careful about where I place the pins so that I know that is where I'm starting and that is where I'm ending so I think it's sewing time and if this part here gets screwed up unpicking the seam is gonna be interesting to say the least So as I thought, this machine cannot handle so much fabric. So I'm going to have to get the Bernina out to finish this. I only got like this much into the seam and the machine was not happy. <laughs> Big guns are out. I think I'm set up. Um, I think I'm going to change my strategy <laughs> again and instead of having the body of the coat facing up on the plate 
I'm going to have it facing down meaning that the body of the coat not the collar is going to be the part that um, moves on the um, on the surface of the sewing machine the collar is going to be up uh, I think at, the po at this point it's just trial and error because again I've said this about 10,000 times in this video but there is so much fabric in this thing that it is not even funny okay so far much better this machine is not having any issues at all with so much fabric although I'm still only at the pit where there's the collar and the front lapel I haven't gotten to the back that has or the part that has the cape the coat all the linings all the interlinings and stuff so let's see how it fares but so far so good this is an absolute pig <laughs> and now I've got it to the point where the cape is also there and so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to change the stitch length a little bit so that it is um, longer because the, t the stitches are becoming a lot smaller than they would be otherwise but this is definitely a challenge thankfully once it gets to um, the facing it will be a lot easier and this is the most difficult seam in the whole thing I think so see what happens and, and hopefully there are no tucks or anything under there although if there are I'm not gonna worry because it's gonna be hidden by the collar so not a huge deal but I'd rather not have that if I can help it it's on <laughs> this is the moment of truth so on the collar there are no puckers and there are no puckers on the inside of the coat this is the coat now what it really matters is the outside where the collar and the coat meet let's see what that looks like because that is that is going to tell me whether I have to do this again so rip the seam and do it again or if I am good so let's observe holy cow <laughs> there are absolutely you can't see it here but these are not puckers but there are absolutely no puckers no tucks no gathers in that seam so now the next step is to let's turn this around again clip these seams again here a little more and then press the seams flat and also the pattern doesn't tell you to do this but I'm going to grade the seams on the <clears throat> coat part of the cape coat so that it isn't so bulky I mean there's a lot of bulk there so this the, the seam I'm gonna when I press this open this is gonna go down and this is gonna go like this the seams here that I'm going to grade are the ones that when I press the seam open like this will be at the bottom so in this case it'll be the topmost seam here and that also happens to be the seam with um, all of the the flannel and the muslin and all of those things that add to the bulk and I should have really done this before clipping more but alas I didn't so here we are now so now I'll just end up with like a whole bunch of little squares I have pressed the seams flat believe it or not so this one gets sewn to this here the same way that I sewed um, the seam allowances in the previous video for the shoulders and so on ideally I think I missed one here ideally once you do that 
this lower seam allowance, which is this is a cape, uh, the coat uh, facings, um, not not facings, um, interlinings, uh, uh, this uh, backstay and everything. In an ideal world, that would also be sewn down, but because it is already clipped, it's going to be very interesting. So I'm going to leave that for as late as possible to do. Uh, I won't bore you with the details on how to do the herringbone. If you want to see that, you can go to the previous video where I do uh, show it for a bit when I did the... the uh, uh, what is this called? The hair canvas here, and also when I did the shoulders. But essentially, when you were done sewing the or hand sewing the seam allowance of the collar up, it will look more or less like that. Okay, so I have um, finished sewing the seam allowance flat on the collar, and I just couldn't wait to put this on because. It's really starting to take shape. The last time I put it on, it didn't have the collar, and you could totally feel the weight of the cape pulling everything back. But now that the collar is there, or the under collar anyway, it's really stable. And uh, obviously, when I attach the facing, all of this will have a smaller seam allowance, or she had a larger seam allowance, and so it will be more noticeable that there's a notch there. But this is what it looks like, more or less, in the in the back it's a, a collar without the top and the next step which i am not going to show on camera because it's boring is attaching the collar to the facing that i showed you at the beginning of the video so now the really massively huge endeavor here begins not because it's particularly difficult but because like look at all this fabric it's just hanging off so here I have the cape coat with the collar and I have the facing which is the upper collar and the facing for the center front so what I have to do is match them all around and this is going to be very interesting so that's the outside and then taking the collar pieces just to to start um sort of an easy way just matching the collar and i'm going to do the points that i'm going to do the center and then i'm going to go all the way around and match the the other um the other sides now because of the notch here the sewing is going to be done in two steps so i haven't actually read the instructions yet but i'm pretty sure that's how they're going to do it uh you're going to do the color uh that way you can sort of uh pivot and sew the other pieces so that it all looks nice and this is going to make a lot more sense when i'm actually at the sewing machine but this task right here is a pig just because of all the fabric all the layers and i just pricked myself all of this massiveness that is this piece um this garment right now so pinning 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 so here i've done the collar and now i'm going to i'm going to leave this side here uh with just one pin because i think that is where where the pivoting is going to happen but now I'm going to match the the lapel um, to the lapel facing and with the lapel facing when the garment is on the facing is what you actually see on the collar part it's not the not the body of the garment so it's important to make sure that at least in the lapel side that you have matched all things perfectly and that your facing looks perfect because that is highly, highly visible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and get back to you when I'm done. I'm gonna show you a quick close up. I read the instructions and oddly enough, they're very 
well, oddly, and I mean that very sarcastically, they're very vague about what to do with the collar. So I'm going to show you what essentially has to happen is that the uh, collar and the facings have to be attached to the coat, as I said, and I've already basted it here, but the collar will be uh, sewn pretty much until the point where uh, they were first attached to both the facings, uh, so the back facing, and to the uh, the coat itself. Uh, I went, oh, this is fine. Okay, so, uh, and, and then on the lapel, it's the same thing. So I have to go through, do a running of stitching all the way to the sides. I'm going to mark the corners here to make sure that they are actually sharp corners, and then sew until uh, my stitch line meets the stitch line that is already there from attaching the collar to the pieces, it, to, to the body pieces. And then the same thing on the other side. And then the difference will be when I turn it right side out to, um, to press them. And I haven't decided whether I'm gonna do top stitching or not. Um, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So now what I'm gonna do is just do the sewing uh, and hopefully I don't screw that up because that is a lot of stitching to undo. I mean, once I am done doing all of the major seams and major sewing um, stitching lines in this, uh, in this cape coat, I'm going to have a lot of facing to remove. So now I've come to the point of the lapel and I've pivoted to go uh, down to the top. And here, here's where it gets tricky because you have to make sure that everything lines up, that the collar here is out of the way of the stitching line and that everything is nice and tidy. And then go and carefully sew <clears throat> so that everything comes together at that point and it's gonna be difficult because there's so much uh, seam allowance and so much fabric on this side that it's gonna be uneven for the machine to deal with it but I think it'll be okay may have to adjust just a little bit here there we go let's see And I mean, I guess you can check what you're doing so far, but there's really no way of knowing until you've actually done it all. So far, so good, I think. And now, here's another tricky part because you have to do the same, but in the opposite direction. And I think I stitched a little bit too much here, but um, with my hand stitching, so I'll have to redo that bit. But you don't really want to start there. It's very difficult to start there. So what I'm gonna do is start on this side and do that corner and then go back to the way that I was doing it so that it all, um, so that I end at this point rather than start at this point. Also, I want to point out, just as an aside, that here I've done my marking, which you can barely see there, but I've done my marking using friction pens. So this kind of pen. And uh, a lot of people use it thinking that it disappears when you press it with heat, because it does. But I don't recommend you use it on the outside uh, or anything that you don't want seen because once the garment gets really cold, those lines appear again. I tested that uh, sometime last year and it is true that it does come back. So you'll end up with the red lines or pink lines or whatever on your garment. So only do it on the inside if you're going to line the garment and then it doesn't matter if it gets seen, but never on the outside.
pivot carefully so to where the seams meet. This is getting out of hand here with so much fabric. So now everything is um, attached by machine, all of it. The next step logically is to trim the seams and then turn this right side out. But before I commit to trimming the seams, I need to make sure that this is actually um, done properly at the neckline and that it's going to look good when I turn it for the last time because if I trim the seams first and then do that, it would be very difficult to go back and fix it. So let's do a very quick turning. And of course it's not gonna turn as it should because there's so much fabric in the corners right now that they won't be sharp. But basically what I'm looking for is the inner corner of the lapel. So the inside corner of the lapel, this bit here and See if I can bring it closer. Yeah, so it all looks good. As good as all this fabric can make it look. So that side is fine. Now let's see the other side. Okay, so this side could use some work. It appears. Let me see. Oh. Oh, no, it looks fine. It's just, yeah, it's fine. It's just, it just needs to be trimmed and uh, have the absolute daylight pressed out of it. I've trimmed the seam allowances and I also trimmed the corners. I don't know if you can see them here. Let me see. Ooh, I kicked the tripod. So here, um, they are trimmed and it's actually not focusing, but they're trimmed and they are graded. I also, um, cut the flannel uh, a little more. So after I, I trimmed the seams, I graded the seam by trimming back the flannel so that it's less bulky. And now the real task, and I apologize for the creaky floor, but now the real task of this whole thing begins. And I feel like I keep saying the real task, the real task as if everything that came before wasn't difficult. But now I have to press all of these points, all of these seams open before I can turn it right side out. And for that, we have this tool here. And this is called a tailor's board. And it has tons of points that do different things. And they are very, very helpful for getting to these pesky little corners to press them open and whatnot. So this one is pretty flat. And then this one would be if you have something that is pretty rounded and uh, you know, in, in a variety of different um, scenarios, it works something flat if you need it. And it stands up in different ways to perform different things. And sometimes they look a little different uh, than this one, but uh, they serve the same purpose. And this one comes with a clapper that you can all uh, put together and store away. So let's get to pressing. But you really don't need to see me pressing all of the edges. So I'm gonna press all of the flat edges and when I get to the point, I will start recording again and show you. I'm coming up to the first point, which is the point on the lapel here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this flatter bit of the tailor's board and I am going to place it underneath the fabric and push it all the way till the point is right in here. So there's a hard point there. That is where the, the, point, the point of the wood edge is. And I'm going to press, 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 press. And there is a very slight curve on the lapel here. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't compress the fabric. You can't really see, <laughs> but I am pressing the tip here. Uh, the very edge of the lapel and then I am going to turn it so that I can do the other part of the lapel so push it in there and this is very tricky on the best of days and with so much fabric it's even worse so there it is again and just press it the same way again And so now I've pressed the very corner of the lapel from both the up and down seam and then um, the sideways seams. And I'm gonna keep going, doing that all the way around to all of the points uh, until I'm done. And now it's time to turn the corners. I've already turned one here and I use mostly two tools. I use a chopstick of all things and I also use a proper uh, point turner that is made for sewing now so i'm going to show you this one here that i've already turned and i just want to show you that it's not i mean it's sharp enough but it's not like uh, you know a, a very very extremely pinpoint sharp corner and it is worth acknowledging that it's just not going to be that pointy because with so much fabric it is pretty much impossible. So if you have thinner fabric, like for a shirt, yes, you can get absolutely pointy points, but with so much wool, it is pretty much impossible. So you do the best that you can with the understanding that it's just not going to be sharp, sharp, sharp. So I'm gonna turn the other one. So this is the lapel, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the collar. Now the collar is a little bit weird because it has uh, but it's a lot more pointed for starters and it also has um, a bit of a uh, curve and different people have different methods for doing this including using thread that is sewn into the other side I to be honest just prefer to uh, fold it and then just sort of finagle it massage it until everything is as pointy as I can get it. Again, with the understanding that it is never going to be a sharp point. The important thing is actually that both sides look the same. So both points of the collar look the same and both points of the lapel look the same. Everything else is icing. And I, I am more or less happy with this side. Now that all of my points are turned, it's time to press. And I like pressing with the facing up so that I can fold the facing over onto the garment rather than uh, the garment onto the facing, if that makes sense. That way I can see exactly where my seam line and my fold line are. And the idea is that you want the seam line to be as close to the center of the fold as possible. And if you can't, then what you want is at least from the break point of the lapel down is to have the seam slightly towards the facing so that it doesn't show from the outside. Now on the lapel side, which is off camera here, what you want is the opposite. What you want is the seam, uh, the seam line to be slightly towards the garment because the facing side is what shows uh, on the lapel. So you want the seam line to be slightly towards the garment so that it's nice and clean on the outside. And I hope that makes sense. So pressing, you need to sort of massage the seam so that it's 
which should be making sure that everything is nice and flat and even and then tons and tons of steam and the handy little clapper to make everything flat i have done all of the pressing and i went ahead and i put some pins in there just to keep things together now the next step is top stitching and the top stitching has to be done in two steps one is starting from the break point which is these points here are the break point and what that means that is when the coat is on that is at the point where the lapel sort of rolls back on itself to make the collar and because you have to top stitch from the right side of the garment at all times it has to be done in two steps because from each break point to the other break point the facings and the top collar is the bit that is visible so you have to do the top stitching say from this side here so starting here all around but then at the bottom what you see is the right side of the jacket of the coat in this case so you have to do the top stitching from the other side so you have to finish and end at the break point um, in order to have the top stitching be on the on the right side of the garment when worn okay so i've sunk my needle into the break point i'm a three eighths of an inch and uh this is a facing so i'm sewing with a facing up because that is the right side of this and i'm just going to start sewing and i'm not I'm not back stitching or make or tying a knot. Instead, I'm leaving very long threads here. And once uh, uh, this whole thing is up stitched, I will take those uh, threads to the wrong side of the facing and bury them in there. That way, the top stitching looks nice. So here we go. And also, my stitch length is set to four because I don't want tiny stitches for my top stitching. I want them to be. Um, sizable. This part is going to be a little tricky because uh, we're coming to the notch of the lapel here, so the inner corner of the notch, and we have to sew to a particular point, then turn it in, sew up the, the uh, seam line here, and then up so that it is all um, even. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew to where this seam begins, so that where that pin is. And then I'm going to rotate the fabric again, and I am going to count how many stitches I have to make until my needle hits the seam allowance here. Then I'm gonna go the same number of stitches up to the seam, up the seam allowance, not the seam allowance, the stitch line. Then I'm gonna pivot again and start going in the other direction. And I have to remember how many stitches that was because I'll do the same at the other end of the lapel. So this is the part that I sewed. So I sewed from, uh, this was the top is what I'm trying to say. And as you can see, the stitching here is buried in the, um, in the stitch line there for the collar. So that is stitched in the ditch. And then on the other side, it's also invisible because it is buried in that line there. Now it's time to do the parts below the break point. And for that, I have to stitch in the other direction. So starting, depending on, on whether it's the left or the right side, starting or ending right at the break point, but from the right side of the coat. The next step is extremely important because even though the top stitching is done and all of that, the collar is still very much loose. So, in order to keep the collar in place, what needs to happen is that this seam here that attaches the facing to the collar needs to be stitched 
to the seam that attaches the collar to the coat. So here, and it has to be done by hand. There is pretty much no way that you can get this under a sewing machine. And this task is made the more difficult because of all of this notching here. But uh, essentially it is just a matter of doing it until you get it right. So match center backs and try to put a pin in there if possible just to keep it together all the way around again making sure the things that need to match do like shoulder seams etc Stitching line done. Now this collar is nice and secure. As you can see, it doesn't flop open, which would do if we hadn't secured the, the seams there. And that part is done. The next part, and it's the last part of uh, this um, episode, is to catch stitch the facing down to the body of the coat all the way around so including the neckline here because the lining uh, is put in in the vintage manner but in the next video I'll do the hem and I will do the lining and that'll be it for the coat that'll be everything completed so uh, stay tuned for that and if you haven't subscribed yet make sure that you do so that you don't miss that video thank you so much for watching I will see you next time bye